4D Jaws Aquarium Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a 4D Aquarium Jaws design. So the aquarium part is actually underneath the nail which maintains a very nice sleek thinness to this nail. The one requirement if you're going to be doing an aquarium that way is that you have to have a nice deep C curve. And so the actual Jaws logo is just painted on there. There's a sheer blue layer where the aquarium is, and then there's that 3D shark face. I absolutely hate sharks, so this design took a lot of guts for me to actually make, even though it's something that's been on my list for a long time because I thought it'd be cool. But I actually did it. I hope you guys like it, and I hope it was worth my terror. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin and paint that layer of sheer blue or a glass gel or a jelly gel or whatever you want to call it. Um, from about the hyponychium down and then I'm going to take and fill in the nail bed area of the nail with white leaving a nice straight line This is all just gel polish I'm going to then take a tannish color of gel polish and I'm going to be painting the swimmer along that line And so when I'm painting the swimmer, it doesn't have to be perfect In fact, the details can be at the minimum because it is so small and the swimmer is sort of a background item to this design. It's obviously an important element, but you're really, your eyes are going to go to the shark and to the aquarium and to the big jaws word before they go to the swimmer. So if you want to keep it kind of low key for your swimmer, go for it. So then after I have the basic skin done on my little swimming lady, I'm going to take some brown gel polish and add her hair and some more shading just going around it and like i said this is the jaws logo and if you guys i'm sure that this swimmer that i keep calling her has a name but if you guys couldn't tell i'm terrified of sharks and so watching the movie or doing any extra research just wasn't happening for this design i am sorry but i couldn't handle it so it's gonna be what it's gonna be so i'm gonna keep going through and adding all of her shading some very basic roughed in facial features her hair some shading along the bottom of her body or the you know the area that's down so that it looks like she's got some nice detail on her while keeping it actually very quick and very easy but you can keep it you know you won't have to do as much as i did so then i'm going to take and add the water line with some white again so this is partially painting over your swimmer with just some swimmy swimmy some wavy little lines and then with red gel paint i'm going to write the word jaws right above that in the big white area of this nail so I'm going to first just kind of block in where each letter is going to go with the gel paint and then go through and fill in and define the letters and make them a bit more bold. So there's just the first little bit of it and then I'm going to go through, like I said, and thicken them up. So I'm going to do this to each letter and go through. And you don't have to use gel paint, to be perfectly honest, I don't know why I use gel paint. It's not my favorite product to use. I normally would go with acrylic paint, so who knows. But if you are going to use gel paint or a gel product, I would go with a gel paint instead of gel polish. Gel polish for this, I wanted those nice, really crisp, clean lines, and gel polish tends to run a little bit. At least the majority of the formulas do not necessarily run, but they just, the lines get a bit softer than what a gel paint will deliver. It'll give you those really nice, crisp, intense lines, which for a bold logo like this is really what you want. So you can then go through and clean up the lines with some white gel paint in case any of them got a little bit funky or off center or not completely straight. You can just clean those up and then apply a layer of glossy gel top coat over the entire thing to seal that. And now on a nail form backing, we're going to sculpt the basis of the aquarium. So it's going to be just a nice clear rectangle, very, very thin with acrylic. You could also do this with a builder gel. It's up to you. But then I'm going to press my little jaws nail into that clear acrylic and then scoop up the acrylic that's around it that's unneeded from around the sides of it and just kind of leave that on the nail form backing to finish setting up. So just kind of use the tip of your brush to manipulate it and scoop it up. And then I'm going to sculpt two more bits of clear acrylic on a nail form backing. This one is going to be for the top and the bottom of the aquarium. So we've got the front and the back, and then we need the other two sides to create that full, that fully enclosed surface or vessel. So the top one, as you can see, is a little bit bigger and I have an extra little hole or a gap in it that is intentional. So you do need to have that little space. I pressed the bottom of the nail into the smaller one to fill, to fill that in, and then I'm going to fill my aquarium approximately 25% of the way I put too much of that first glitter in with blue and blue glitter. 
So I have a really dark blue and then kind of a light sparkly glue, blue glitter. I can't talk. So after I've got my glitter in, I'm going to glue that top piece in behind the nail underneath, and then I'm going to seal up the edges with some more clear acrylic so that there isn't any gaps besides that one intentional hole in the middle. So leave that hole open, but fill in the rest. And then I'm going to fill a syringe with water or oil. I personally use water most of the time, but that's just because it's more convenient to grab than oil. So just take and fill in your aquarium with the water. And then after that's done, fill in the hole you used to fill the aquarium. And then you should be good to go. So I'm just going to file off that little bit of extra acrylic off the back of the aquarium that was sticking up from the one piece. And then after that's done, dust it and you can start working on your shark. So I'm going to begin sculpting my shark with gray acrylic on a nail form backing once again. And to sculpt this little shark, I did it in a couple different layers and different pieces. So this first piece is going to be the tip of his nose and then I'm going to take some white and kind of blend it in so it's not just it's not like a white section and a gray section but it smoothly morphs from one color to the other and the weird thing with this shark is that you're viewing him from underneath from like his belly and so you can see a different side of his mouth than the classic you know front on view so I've got that little lip for where his upper jaw is and I'm going to fill in the rest of that u-shape with black acrylic for the inside of his mouth and then next to that i'm going to be sculpting his lower jaw separately this way i can tip it out a little bit giving him more of an open mouth view if you didn't want to have that element of it you could finish sculpting the rest of the shark and then just sculpt the jaw on top of it like another layer to the 3d element but you can do it either way so with black i'm also going to be adding my sharky's eyes and then I'm going to do a little bit of gray on the lower jaw. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth with these two pieces until I have everything sculpted. The next thing you're going to wanna sculpt is the teeth. Obviously you can't forget teeth. Your Sharky needs to be able to bite stuff. And I'm gonna keep calling him Sharky so he's less scary to me. If anybody's noticing that, it helps me. So anywho, we're going to take and do all of those teeth. So there's the teeth on the lower jaw. I only sculpted four there because it's a little bit harder to see them at the current moment since he's on the white, but there's going to end up being so many teeth on the upper jaw that it just all looks so toothy that there's plenty. So I've got those first row of teeth that I'm sculpting on the upper jaw just around that upside down U shape. And if you're looking at it, I'm leaving a pretty decent sized gap between each tooth, but that is so I can add a second one between them. So the second row of teeth that I'm adding is actually partially on top of what I'm thinking of as like the lip. And so you're going to sculpt them on the lip. And once you start adding painted details later on, you'll get to smooth all of that out or you'll get to brighten it all up so that it's easy to see each tooth very vividly. And so then after you have all those teeth done, you can attach your lower jaw to the rest of the shark face, a little bit of black acrylic or a little bit of nail glue, clear acrylic, whatever product you want to use that's convenient in your preference. So glue or attach that little jaw down there attach it so that it is open so that it does look like he's his mouth is ready to bite that swimmer and then kind of finish off the bottom of it so at this point it looks like two separate pieces that you glue together but you don't want it to look like two separate pieces that you glue together so take some more acrylic and just fill in the little side gaps so that it's a nice smooth uniform shark first i started out with just some white kind of blending all of those bits together and then I'm going to take some more of the gray and kind of even it out clean up that bottom line and then there you go once that's all smoothed out your little sharky is done and you can leave him on the nail form backing to finish setting up before you start messing around and gluing him on so now to glue him on I'm going to rough up just the very tip of my aquarium so that it has something for the glue to really grab onto and then apply a little bit of a nail glue and then hold that shark until he is really gripping and you'll be able to feel it once the nail glue starts to grip and then I'm going to fill in the back of my little shark with some clear acrylic to make sure that it is really nicely attached together. So now the fun part, if you like sharks, maybe, is you can go ahead and paint your shark and really define those teeth. So you can take some white paint that's really super, super bright and highlight each and every tooth to make them show up. And if you want to take it a step further, you can even paint in some additional teeth if you would like to. If you take some black paint, you can outline them a little bit and make them look a little bit sharper. With diluted black paint, you can do some more shading and different 
definition on the shark wherever you want to. You can really go crazy with this design and you can add some blood on the teeth or blood dripping off. You know, it's really kind of up to you and how scary and how gruesome you want the design to be. And all of the details on here can pretty much be done with black and white paint if you just dilute them down so that they can blend out almost like a watercolor. So then after you're all happy with your shark painting and he's nice and vicious looking, just apply some matte top coat over Mr. Shark Breath and then he's all done. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. I really do think it is pretty cool even though it gives me heart palpitations. I hope if you are a Jaws fan that this one gives you a smile and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to see them and I will see you next time. Bye!